let's see if we are streaming. <laughs> technology. <laughs> technology. Well, y'all, I think that we are live. I'm just double checking to make sure. But I have Darcy here with me. She is a psychotherapist and she, yep, there we are. And she has been, look, you can hear us. Well, let me silence that. So she has been so courageous to actually decide to share parts of her story, part of challenges that she, she has experienced in her life and has really grown through and learned things through, even though it didn't feel like that in the midst of it for the first time publicly here with us today. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, Darcy, for being willing to share with us, especially for the first time in a public way, because I know that that's not, not easy. I, I recently experienced something similar to that with part of my story, and there's a lot of feels that can come up with that, right? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, definitely. And you're quite welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. I appreciate being here. I'm excited for this conversation. So just as a reminder, everyone who joins us, whether you join us live, whether you join us on replay, um, this group, this Reset Community is really a place where um, it's designed for everyone to come, to learn, to grow, to manage life in a way that feels better, to have a better quality life. And as part of that, that means challenges are going to happen we're all going to experience them in some way some that are, that are really on the other end of the spectrum that are traumatic and some that are everyday life stressors that are building up and everything in between and we want to we want to feel inspired to be able to move through them and to not have those challenges or those traumas dictate all of who we are or dictate all of our life. We want to be able to really enjoy a quality life. And so that's why I created this reset community for us to inspire one another, to feel inspired from the inside out. And so Darcy's going to be sharing her story with us today um, in part to, to support her along her own journey, right? Because sharing our stories is always a support to us as well and sharing our stories. But then also, of course, to to offer an opportunity to inspire you all, whomever may need it at any point in time, who we may or may not ever know of, but that's the beauty. That's the beauty of this space. So Darcy, again, thank you so much for being here with us today. If you don't mind kind of starting out by telling us who you are now, where you are now, kind of what you do in life now, um, <clears throat> uh, whether it's like family or your kind of your day-to-day, -day, like what you focus on, Walk us through kind of where you're at right now before we hop into the challenges that you've navigated. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so hey everybody, I'm Darcy. Uh, as Tony said, I am, I'm a psychotherapist. I'm a LCSW. I, um, I currently live in New York City. I've managed in, in the city during the pandemic. I'm, I'm in Queens, so gotta love Queens. Where <laughs> I'm actually, unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm right by where like it was, uh, COVID was really hard hit in the beginning. Mm. And uh, I was grateful to be able to work as a teletherapist from home during that whole period of time. And I, I worked for a really good employer, so they were very, uh, and I've, I've worked for some not so good employers before, but anyway, you know, we, we all have them. But so this, these guys were really great during the pandemic. Nice. Um, so yeah, so I, yeah, I'm a social worker. Um, I'm currently, um, I'm divorced. I, uh, I live on my own. I have, um, I'm family oriented and I have, um, most of my family lives out of state. But I also, you know, I have a lot of good friends who are still, thankfully, in the city. <laughs> Some have moved away and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm divorced and, and single. And um, I'm, I'm very involved in my church community. That's mm -hmm. been a big help for uh, during the, the pandemic and just in general. It's, it's yeah. been like I, I love my – I'm a very social-oriented, social justice, uh, very liberal, like Unitarian Universalist. Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. – yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm very, I, I'm eager to, you know, enjoy life and make the most of it. I do have, um, a dis I have a couple of disabilities, which is one of the reasons I, I decided to share with Tony and uh, mm -hmm. share my experience, it's something that I've never done before. So I have a, vis uh, I've had a visual impairment my whole life. I, um, I have a visual impairment and then I have uh, anxiety and ADHD. So it's, it's interesting navigating it as a professional, you know, now that I'm older, as opposed to when I was younger and stuff like yeah. that. But I've, gotten a lot more confident in who I am and how to like be an advocate for myself, you know, that sort of mm. thing. So 
And I, I imagine that's no easy feat, especially because you, you just named, right? Like a whole bunch of things that you're involved in and that you're social. And so being able to be social in, in settings with other people and feel comfortable and confident and be able to be yourself while you're there and to be able to enjoy church and allow your church to be a support to you and you to be a support in your church and then also to be a psychotherapist and support other people who are going through things, right? Like that takes someone that is able to be able to navigate some of the stressors of life. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm also a psychotherapist. We're not perfect. We have our stressors. We like, <laughs> we don't know everything, right? Like we, we all have our own healing journeys, of course. Right. So not saying that that doesn't mean if you're a psychotherapist, you can't have your crap that you got to work through because we all do. Right. Of course. But actually in some sense, can, if I can interject yeah, real quick, I yeah. think in some sense, is it actually, yeah. Yeah, we're as we as our psychotherapists, we are we're definitely awesome. And I know you're awesome, Tony, just from everything I've heard from you. But I think our human side, one of the things I used to like I, I used to struggle with, you know, what's a what to share and what not to yeah. share. But I think our our human sides make us more relatable and make us more personable and especially if we use a sense of humor with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sense of humor is such a big one. It's such a big one. So important. Obviously we don't want to make light of situations where there, you know, is pain that needs to be felt, but a sense of humor Absolutely. is just one of those lights of life, right? That like we need to turn on sometimes in the darkness. So <laughs> that's definitely a good point. So Darcy, hearing where you're at now and also hearing a, a little bit of a, like a tidbit of some of what you've come from, it sounds like Although you are in a place now where you are able to enjoy community, enjoy socializing, be a part of your church, be able to do work that is meaningful to you, that it has not always been that way, that there have been challenges, in particular, the ones that you ha had shared with me of, you know, you were, I believe you were saying you were raised in this kind of seemingly affluent area where things kind of look pic picturesque but behind the scenes that just was not the case and so yeah. how to navigate right like you said the visual impairment the ad uh, the add the anxiety like how do i navigate these experiences that i'm having when it seems on the surface like things should be x y or z and so if you could kind of start us um off where you think is the best starting point for that, those challenges that you were experiencing, like what and what made that really the thick of it really challenging for you in particular? Yeah, well, that was the, the big thing about it is. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I am going to say I am I am grateful for certain opportunities that my community provided me on a surface level, but deep down, it was like. I, I mean, I am. But my parents came from. Uh, I had I had a very good family, you know. But, you know, like everybody, we all have our issues, but they were great. You know, they were my parents, they, they were married. You know, we had, a, we always had like, we were very supportive. They stressed education and they stressed hard work and doing the best we can and being good people and, you know, respecting everyone, no matter what their mm -hmm. statue in life is, which was interesting coming the fact that, like I said, I came from an affluent community where, uh, but when push came to shove, it was like, you had to be perfect. And mm -hmm. like growing up, I just... I always felt to the side. I wasn't like, you know, I was too, sh I always felt like I'm too this. I'm too shy. I'm too awkward. I'm too like, I was always, even in my family, I, I love it, but we joke about it now, especially with my mom. I was like, she's like, I wish I taught you to stand up for yourself mm -hmm. more. I was like, yeah, no, I, I see what you mean. Like she, they helped me advocate for me as best as they could. But like, I, I was always the, the one with the disability. Everybody like tiptoed around me or like, you know, you didn't like, that kind of thing. You know, I was mm. never bullied in school, but I also was very alienated. So I, I'm not going to sit there and say I was like kicked on and harassed, but like, I was, I was always to myself. I was mm. like the last one picked in gym. I was, uh, you know, trying to find people to, you know, sit with at lunch. You know, I had friends here and there, but I never had like close friends or I didn't have like the childhood or like the teenage years that you like remember, like hanging out with all your friends and this, that, and the other thing. It was just a struggle for me to get by. So, uh, I did grow, I mean, I did average in school. I mean, I wasn't like a top student, but I definitely didn't like, you know, I mean, I wasn't failing or anything like that. Uh, my, I did have a uh, visual aid for my visual impairment was the biggest uh, hindrance probably when I was younger. I mean, my ADD and my anxiety was too, but I actually didn't realize not until I became like a, 
a therapist that I did struggle with a lot of social anxiety when I was younger because of the other mm -hmm. two things. But yeah, the visual impairment was because my parents always had to make sure that I had the right books and I had whiteboards in school at the time because they had chalkboards and then I had large print books. It was before <laughs> I was like right before uh, the age where everything was on computers and stuff like that. Yeah. So I went to, um, I graduated high school in 97 and I was uh so yes, yeah, so I was in middle school. I bounced around a lot too in school because I grew up in a public school, which was all right, but they didn't always, they didn't, even in a, even in a, in a quote unquote community where it was supposed to be the best like educational system in like the state, let alone even the country. Cause I grew up in Fairfield County, Connecticut, which is mm. known for being one of the richest communities in, uh, at the time, I don't mm. know if it still is, but anyway, but yeah. But the teachers, even in my, in what was supposed to be a good school district, I'll give you one, I'll give you an example, which is why my parents finally decided to take me out of public school and put me in private school. I was in a typing class and I, every, every semester or every year, um, the state of Connecticut, they have a vision board. They would make sure that my books and my parents would make sure they get sent to the class. And they apparently got sent to the class, but my typing teacher climbed up and down that she's like, no, I like never had like, you know. I don't know where her books are. And she was like really like a difficult teacher to begin with and very not supportive and it, that things like that. Yeah. And so like halfway through the year or something like, I think my parents ended up coming in or something for like teacher conferences. And she, she's like, Oh, I just found your books in the closet or whatever. So mm -hmm. she didn't even bother to take a look and just, you know, and I was the type of person that just kind of like, I just, stayed to myself and didn't really ask questions or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that was just one example of probably a bunch of others, but yeah. So, so then they put me in a private school and stuff like that. So. It's, it sounds like there was this feeling for you that you, you, I think you even use the words, like you felt like you were too different or like too isolated. And like, as, yeah. as a, as a child kind of growing up in this area where there was this, it sounds like an expectation of perfection, like, or at least presenting as such. How, how, what, like, what, how did that affect you internally? Like, what, what were the struggles for you that you experienced while you're trying to navigate that? It was really hard. Yeah. I mean, it definitely affected my self esteem for a while. I had a hard time making friends. I had a hard time, like, like I said, speaking up for myself. I had a hard time. It meets like things difficult socially. Like, I had to like rely on it. Like, I always had to rely on my parents to drive me around in a community where I couldn't really get around. Yeah. Especially when people started to drive and things like that. And like I said, I didn't have a lot of friends to like hang out with or hang out on the weekend. I mean, I had some and you know, I was able to like make do, but uh, yeah, no, it was just really, it was really difficult. Yeah. It, it's definitely like I stayed home on the weekends. I'm like, if, my brother, for instance, was the exact opposite at the time. Like he was on like all the sports teams and he was like, you know, prom king probably and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's so I, I he know was always popular and that sort of thing. So yeah, I always struggled with that. Just yeah. comparing myself and yeah. Yeah, and I know for sure that there are people in our in our audience who have experienced that feeling of like I'm too different or too much in some way. And also there's um this this perfectionistic um reputation or appearance or way of presenting yourself that i know some people fall into and sometimes i hear this and darcy i'm curious if this relates to you is like sometimes for some people that that are like well my parents were great my family was great like there are these things and so i i was struggling with maybe certain things in that background but i know other people had it way worse and they like dismiss what they experienced and so then they actually while they think they're being grateful um that comparison makes i call compare and despair and i know other people do too right it's like that compare and despair cycle of like well my my hardship isn't enough of a hardship if i look at other people or compare to other people um and so they, they wind up like pushing down their feelings and still trying to be perfect, like all at the same time. And I'm curious if that was part of your experience or if yours was different. Oh my God. That was, that was totally in a lot mm -hmm. of senses, my experience. Thank you for hitting on that actually. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, I just kept stuffing my feelings and I developed a lot of my own personal issues, you know, how you get a habit for me, like, you know, 
issues with food, issues with men, like codependency, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. And then I just, after, like, then I just kind of lashed out after a while. Then I was just like, after, like, late in high school, I was just kind of like, fuck it. I'm so tired of this. Like, I'm so tried, tired of trying to be a certain way or, like, you know, say the right thing or do the right mm. thing. And, like, well, not even do the right thing, but just, like, yeah, it's just, yeah, just conforming to everything. It just got too much. Yeah. Yes. That was a- Yes, I, th- I think that's so important for people to hear, to hear like if you ever feel like you've been too much or too different, but at the same time you have to be um, just right or like or 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 th- super thankful and like try to push your own feelings down, whether it's for the sake of other people or whatever the case is, then actually you can wind up hurting yourself internally and that builds up. Right. And, and you can either shut down or lash out. Right. We see we see that. And that's a place I think that's important for people to hear from you in particular, Darcy, because none of us can say that one person's hardship is worthy, more worthy than someone else's hardship. Because we all have hardships in our lives. And sure, is there a spectrum of like, of, of trauma, significant trauma on one end versus maybe certain challenges or stressors in life that you experience, what we call the ACEs, the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, right? Like there's a whole spectrum of those in there. But if you are telling yourself that the hardship that you're going through or the hardship that you've gone through doesn't matter because someone else has it worse, you're actually kind of digging yourself in a hole emotionally and that can backfire, what did you wind up doing, Darcy? Like you said, I know you said that the self-esteem pieces came into play and then you wound up kind of lashing out a little bit. As you entered into adulthood, what did you do to kind of help yourself move through that? It took time and it, 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 it goes in waves. Um, I will say, yeah, I, I definitely like, Bear with me for a second. I'm getting a little bit emotional now. Yeah. Take your time. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, being a social worker and also being a person, like when I'm in relationships, I tend to, to gravitate towards, I'm like the helper. So I tend to find people that like have the wounded souls, so to speak. And then, yeah, it definitely gets in like, you know, it definitely got to be like, oh, well, your family is, you know, so great on the surface, like nothing's wrong with them or what, nothing's wrong with you or, you know, get caught up in like, you know, all this kind of thing. Like, oh, you, you know, you went to good schools, you, you know, you did this, you did that, but no, that like, doesn't, but listen to me, like, just listen to me. And sometimes I don't even listen to myself. Like I, yeah. So that's why when I found social, like, yeah. I, and finally I, what's, what's really been helpful for me is finding my spirituality. And I find like such like in my, 20s and 30s I've got like wonderful girlfriends I didn't Mm -hmm. have girlfriends like when I was younger but I have like some of the strongest women like that I know or like in my core and I know I'm a strong woman too now and I and I yes I was strong but I I just I've always had a hard time saying it and whenever people say like oh you're like you know you know I can't believe what you've been through or like you're you know that I I'm kind of like one of those comeback people I bounce from relationship to relationship and uh, but usually I kind of like come out like on top somehow like yeah. or for myself and I yeah you know yeah I love that you claim like I'm a strong woman because there's a there's a str- there's a difference between I'm strong because I have to be I'm strong because I choose to be right like one feels very forceful and I heard you say like I kind of always knew I was strong right and I'm guilty of um I have to be the super independent woman because I felt like I couldn't rely on people because I would get hurt or I'd be betrayed or blah, 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 blah. Right. Like, so that was a forceful did, strong. I did the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. Of that talk, listening, <laughs> listening to, I always find your story so interesting because I was like, I, I feel like we're like similar, but on different ends of the, <laughs> the spectrum. And the like, yang. Oh. Yeah. So funny, so funny. Yeah, and it and it can switch. Oh, look, this puppy. He look. He's like he's a wanna go win it. You wanna go win it. You know. You're he's such so a silly. He's so funny. But yeah, so paying attention to when um, you go rigid, right? So if you go too much to the strength, 
or too much to, I, I, I can't be strong. I'm not able to be strong, but to be able to choose it, that's claiming it, right? Like I can, I can be a strong woman. Like I can be a strong man. I can be a strong person, not because I have to be right to protect myself or anything like that, but because I am and I can be right. Like I can claim that. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Oh, so beautiful. So Darcy, what would you say would be like the top two, you're acting really obnoxious right now, would be the top two, he doesn't, he never does this, I don't know what's going on, would be the top two takeaways for you of the challenges that you experience is like feeling really different, kind of that compare and despair, like what's the top two learning experiences or growth opportunities that really stand out for you now as where you're at in your adulthood right now? Well, definitely for people, like for people and myself to like, to, to never give up, to, to always use that, like whatever you feel like your internal driving force is to, uh, to, to claim that and to like, just be who you are and find that like, yeah, like I feel like social work, being a therapist is like, it's been my saving grace. It's been quite a journey. Like, and I've had some, I, I, I'm definitely proud of my career and where I, where I've been. I, I'm one of those type of, I, I'll never forget when I was in uh, undergrad, when I was going to Westcon, um, were asking me, it was my senior year and they were asking me, okay, what do you want to do for your internship? Or I was like, give me a challenge. I was like, just give me a challenge. And they gave me a bunch of lists. Like, and uh, I was like, okay, well, I don't really want to do that. Or I, you know, and then I was like, they're like addictions. And I was like, something about working in addictions. I was like, oh. okay. <laughs> so I ended up in inpatient rehab. And I've been like, I, I thought I was going to go into schools or teaching, but like, I've been working in addictions and mental health for like, since 2002, mm. I've worked in, uh, I worked in 28 day rehab for seven years. I worked in, in a methadone program in, in uh, New York and downtown Manhattan for like seven. I currently work as a psychotherapist uh, at an outpatient mental health and substance abuse program in Queens. Mm. I worked at lots of like other places and like, I went to. Fordham, I got my, I went to Fordham and graduated in 2012. I got my master's. So, you know, I have a lot of stuff that I, I really take pride in my career and what I've like been able to like achieve. I used, you know, I still, you know, throughout the time I have like some of my, like, yeah, some of my doubts, but it's, I've gotten a lot more confident in what I do yes. and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I can feel that. I can feel that, that sense of like, you seeming to just in your sharing of your story, like I could almost see like your, your confidence shift as you were sharing your story. Right. It was like, yeah, like I can, I can even claim my confidence more. Right. And I, and I think that's such a beautiful thing and a beautiful gift for those that are watching too, to like, to see and to witness is I was telling Darcy before we started recording, um, life is a journey, right? So like, there's still going to be things that we're struggling with, or need to grow in or evolve in some way forever that that's never done. But when we can sit back and reflect on particular challenges or a particular challenge and say, wow, like, this has actually helped me grow in this way. And I didn't even realize it when that was happening. But I'm stronger now because of it. There is this sense of power and, and confidence that can be fueled inside of us. And I also love, Darcy, that you said about spirituality and how that's become important to you. Because in every single interview we've done so far, faith or a, a relationship with something greater than yourself has come into play in some way, shape, or form in everyone's transformation and everyone's experience. And I, I full-heartedly agree with that as well. Um, that has been a major part of my transformation too. In fact, it's in the reset. We haven't gotten there yet, but you guys will get there too. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I love, I love that you said that. Would you add anything to any of those pieces that I just shared? Yeah, well, just that, uh, yeah, and the interesting thing about the spirituality piece is one thing I like, uh, I, I get, but, you know, this is a little bit more personal too, uh, but yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely appreciate like I, my spirituality and I've also recently started like my own 12 step groups and like, I've just, I've been able to own them and like, I really, I dig deeper with my spirituality and like, you know, serenity prayer and just kind of like act like faith, my faith over, you know, and like, 
kind of utilizing other people's strength and hope and experience. And I just hope that I could be uh, of, you know, support to someone. Yeah. And especially people struggling with disabilities, whether they be mental or physical, just definitely don't give up and like keep, keep striving to find those people that do like, you know, that do care and believe in yourself and find others that, you know, will support you along your way too. Yeah. So beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Darcy. I want to, to ask you, I always ask, um, because part of the, the group purpose is to inspire. Um, who in your life is an inspiration to you? That could be someone that you know personally, or it could be, you know, a famous person, a celebrity. Like, for example, Maya Angelou is someone that really inspires me. Um, who would you say inspires you and why? Well, I, I was... I was thinking about that because I heard on some of your other things you were asking people that. So I was like, okay, I know she's probably going to ask me this. <laughs> probably, I, will, I have to say some of my, my, I have a fair amount of people, but I guess the, the biggest, the personal one, right, like, is my, my, okay, so my undergrad social, some of my undergrad social work professors, mm. because I was really able to, that was where I was able, really able to st start standing out for the first time. I wasn't just like, uh, I wasn't just like on the side kind of thing. And now granted after I have had other teach, like some of my acting professors, when I like, now that I've contacted them, you know, through Facebook and kept in touch, they said, Oh yeah, we always remember you, you know, you did a great job. And I appreciated that, but I didn't feel that at the time. So it's like, I didn't know, but like when I was anyway, so when I, I guess I have two pr professors in particular that I went to, uh, that taught me in social work school. And then also there, um, so Patty Ivory and Marge Steinberg, so those were two. And then they also supported me in my first job. And that was when, and also I was able to do a supervision program when I worked with interns. So I was able to kind of like, I respected them as teachers and professors, but they also gave me the belief. And like, we started to, I worked together with them as colleagues. So like, mm. I, like I supervised some of their students, so we would work together. So I, it was helpful for me to kind of have that, like them looking at me at not just as their students, but also as like their equals. So. Oh, that's so amazing. I love it. Yeah, as you were talking, I was thinking about some of the professors that I had in one in particular, for sure. Professors, teachers out there, you never know what students you're inspiring. You never know what hearts you're touching, right? And I love that message because um, I know for sure there's some teachers in this group right now. And as it continues to grow, you know, sometimes, you know, teachers, just like students can feel like, I didn't know at the time that they felt this way, right? And, and for them to hear that, you know, to, to receive that message, I think is just an amazing thing. So Darcy, I'm ever grateful for your time, for your story, for your share. Is there anything, any last words that you would like to leave our audience with today, either those that are here live or those that catch us on the replay? I just want to think this this group is a, a very nice very nice group very interesting and amusing so I'm always like uh, I like to be interactive with people so I like listening to other people's stories too so <laughs> yes. yeah so that's, that's it that's awesome. all I just hope everyone's doing well and keep stay safe and stay healthy and whatnot be happy yes be happy right and when you're not happy that's okay too because you can always come back to happiness when you're ready when you've allowed yeah. yourself to feel those other feelings right. Absolutely. Absolutely. On, where, on wherever you're at. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Allow yourself to feel it. Love it. All right.